Whether you're a clinical research associate, a clinical trial manager, a recruitment team member, it's in your best interest to improve patient recruitment with the research sites that you work with. This is because studies by, actually a study by Tuft has shown that 80% of pharmaceutical trials don't meet the enrollment deadlines and that leads to potentially $60,000 of cost per day lost and up to $800,000 to $4 million in lost potential revenue. Poor recruitment for sponsors leads to skewed statistical results, loss of revenue for a product, and less support from their investigators. And from the perspective of a site, they face losing revenue for missing targets and future trial opportunities from the sponsors. Now the reasons patients participate in clinical trials vary, so we should look at that. First is the treatment by the latest science, which means medical, medical treatment for them. Next is that they prefer the financial benefits since they get potentially a no-cost treatment option. Finally, it is potentially helping others with the disease and generations to come such as their kids and their grandkids. Patients have many misconceptions about clinical trials. Often they don't understand or know about clinical trials going on and are sort of volunteering for something they don't know. Uh, they also think treatment would be less effective than the standard of care or they may get a placebo. So you have to combat these issues. In addition to that, they may be worried about out-of-pocket expenses. There are many recruitment ideas out there, and it's a good idea to highlight some that we have found that many sites neglect, especially when they're new to research. First one is recruitment plan with goals. Proactively create a recruitment plan to minimize leaving anything to chance. The sense of direction when a study is initiated at your sites will help so much. The set of recruitment milestones that allow you to keep a progress check and to continually motivate the team according to those goals. Utilize the database, so use your searchable patient database from your clinical trial management system or your EMR system to locate the ideal patients that you can call or email. This may require training the site staff on how to accomplish this. Approach local support groups. Approaching local associations and communities can be a great recruitment tool. Although this may require consistent efforts such as dropping off flyers, donuts, refreshments, and even having presentations for the entire group. Next thing you want to do is optimize the website. Research sites websites should have an area that allows patients to see which clinical trials are going on and also a great opportunity to put a human face to your recruitment efforts by showcasing your team. Adding a blog can aid in showing up more frequently on search results on Google or Bing. Uh, if you need help creating a website for your research site or study, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or email me at re at trialjoin.com. Measure everything. Keep measurements on which marketing campaigns are working for you uh, to keep an idea of which techniques work for which indications. Know if a specific campaign helped you actually get randomized patients or simply added names to your database. While both types, referral types can be important, it's important to know which stage they ended up at. At times, patients may not participate in the study going on, but will participate in a later study when they feel more comfortable or fits their criteria. Note where the patient sign up came from. This is where TrialJoin's Helix software system comes in handy and helps sites and sponsors track all their metrics amazingly well. Be culture conscious. When working with different ethnic backgrounds, every group is different and health decisions can be made by an entire family in certain situations. Be respectful of the cultural norms and adapt your relationship to help them with the process of deciding. Education. Patients are often unfamiliar with clinical research and the medical jargon involved. Helping them by explaining diagnosis, medical procedures, and clinical trials in a simplified but friendly way will help them feel more active and autonomous in their decision. This is one thing we have found at TrialJoin to be a large factor in leading patients to randomizing. Drive goal awareness. Uh, depending on the process of reaching out to patients, it is important to impress the goals of the study often and early. This is the way they will remember why they are part of the study. Facilitate questions. Allow your patients to ask questions and educate them proactively why what you do is important and it helps people understand the study, the drug, the development process that they fit into. Support charities. Giving to charities and events will help you become active in supporting medical causes. It'll increase the chances to interact with potential patients and give an area to make a great investment in patient care. Offer screenings. When you know the needs of your patients, you can start offering services that will help those in needs. Uh, the most common things are screenings for blood pressure, memory hearing, diabetes, and there are a lot more. This is a great area for site staff to start identifying patients who will fit a current or future study. A budget for recruitment. A budget for recruitment by setting 
about basically budget for recruitment by setting aside uh, it at the beginning of the study. Developing a contingency plan can offset potential costs when you're not reaching your enrollment goals. Quick responses. Responding quickly to inquiries because patients are at the highest level of interest when you first have your first contact. The faster you respond, the more likely you are to connect with them. Having PIs communicate early on either during the pre-screening process or the screening process will increase randomizations. Follow-up, follow-up. Even after your initial contact, follow-up and follow-through. Send patients study information and during every call make a reason to follow up with them the next time. You may have to follow up three to seven times if your patient comes in for their first screening visit. I hope you found these tips helpful and I hope you do apply them at your clinical research site. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, any of the points I listed out and you want more clarifications, feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'll gladly give you any help and advice I can. Um, I have a, a lot of resources for you, so feel free to reach out to me. Again, this is Arne Bhutani signing out.